part of the Delta land in Greenwood, Mississippi. I have to my right tonight, Brother James Wilkett. To my left, Brother Jonathan Melton. Amen. We're looking forward to a great broadcast tonight. Delighted, thrilled that you saw fit to join us tonight, and even at a later date. We just pray that this uh, broadcast will be a blessing to you. It will encourage you, Amen. strengthen you, equip you, and uh, convict you as well. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as always, I want to encourage you to get you a good King James Bible, word for word translation. Take notes. Follow along with us tonight and uh, take notes and and uh, judge everything we preach and teach based upon the word of God and not what someone else is saying because there's a lot of voices out there they're competing for your allegiance they're competing for your faith amen and we're simply uh, tonight we're going to be attempting to reveal to you or remind you or show you what your faith must be in God's given us faith and he's given us an object to anchor that faith in, amen. It has to be according to God's way and not according to what some denomination has taught for years or what mom and dad has said, but we gotta get back to the word of God, ladies and gentlemen, for the word of the Lord is right. Psalms 33 and four, and all of God's works are done in truth. And, amen. and that truth, the truth, is Christ and Him crucified. Amen. I do want to go ahead and remind everybody about the uh, the broadcast that goes out by some of our other ministers. You know, I, I know Brother Jonathan and Sister Amy Medinsky are way up in the northern area of the country, but we consider them to still be a part of this ministry. We lay claim to them anyhow. Amen. Amen. But they have a broadcast that goes out on Thursday at 7 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. And then also Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, amen. So uh, be sure and, and make note of that. And be sure and set aside those times to join them, amen. You will be blessed and you'll be encouraged and you will uh, gain a wealth of understanding of this great truth of the Word of God. Brother Jonathan Melton, he does a broadcast Sunday night at seven o'clock. Don't miss that. Brother James Wilkett, uh, he does a broadcast on Friday night at seven o'clock, amen. So uh, make note of these and be sure and join in for these uh, teaching sessions and there'll certainly be some preaching as well, amen. amen. And uh, I know you'll be uh, blessed and encouraged. I know that you'll grow in your understanding of this great gospel. I mean, just, you've got to dig in. It's time to dig in. It's time to desire what the, the Lord is giving us today. He's given us ministers uh, of the gospel that he's planted this truth in and, uh, and, and shown the light to. And we're growing right along with you. We're yes. not putting ourselves above Amen. anyone. Right. So we're all growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, speaking of who he is and what he did at Calvary. Amen. So come and grow with us. It's important uh, it, it's, it, that you hear the message of the cross being preached consistently and that you be determined not only to know that, uh, nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified, but you also be determined to turn your ear from everything else. Uh, be determined not to hear anything else. Amen. Amen. So, with that determination, we're going to move forward tonight, and we're going to go back to Second Kings. Amen. Where we was at this uh, past Wednesday night, Brother Jonathan Belton preached. Uh, a fabulous, wonderful message from Second Kings uh, a couple weeks ago, and then Brother James preached just a few pages over. Amen. A great message, and uh, the Lord is really speaking to us through these ministers, and we're thankful for these men. We know that they, I know that they spend a tremendous amount of time in the Word of God, seeking God, and uh, in prayer. Uh, seeking the leading, the guiding of the Holy Spirit uh, because they they understand the, the weightiness, the importance uh, of this gospel that we've been uh, given 
to Thank keep you. it pure and to yes. keep it powerful. Amen. Yes. Praise God. But before we do any of that, <clears throat> amen, we do want to go before the Lord in prayer tonight as we always do. Amen. If you're listening tonight, you have a special need. It's, we understand it's unspoken. Amen. But it's not unspoken in heaven. It may be unspoken here, but it's not in heaven. We're just going to agree with you tonight. Amen. By faith and through the Spirit that the Lord will move on behalf of uh, whatever you have need of. The key is to, to look to the Calvary. The key is to look to the cross. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, the key is to look to Christ and what he did at Calvary as the, to, as the answer for your every need. That's what the Bible says. Yes. Amen. In uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 32, how Amen. shall he, God, uh, how shall he not with him Christ and what he did at Calvary, Christ crucified, also freely give us all things freely. Amen. So it all comes from Calvary and God, our loving Father. He desires that we knock on the door. He desires that we call upon him. Amen. And cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Father, Father. And we do that through the blood of Jesus. It's Christ and what he did at Calvary yes, that yes. opened the, the doorway that we can enter into the throne of grace Amen. and petition of the Father on behalf of our every need, no matter what it might be. Amen. He hears the prayers of the righteous man, Amen. and that is the man who has his faith anchored in the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what makes the person righteous, not anything that we do, but faith in what he has done. Amen. Amen. So, having said all of that, we're just going to go right into prayer. We're going to believe with you tonight for whatever you have need of. Amen. Just pray with me. Dear Heavenly Amen. Father, Father, we Dear come Father, to you Lord. tonight <coughs> and we cry, uh, Father, Father, through the blood of the Lamb tonight, Thank you, Lord. And, yes. and you know the people that's listening tonight and even at a later time where they are, what they have need of, Lord. And we lift these folks up to you tonight. Lord, those that are in sanctuary tonight. Lord, those are listening by internet and also once again at a later time. Lord God, we're asking for you to move. We pray, God, that you would heal that sick body. Lord, yes. that your healing of virtue would flow right now that it would touch them from the top of the head all the way down to the sole of their feet. Thank Lord, you. let there be cleansing, let there be healing, yes, let there be a healing miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God and where provision is uh, is needed, Lord, you uh, began to provide through uh, Calvary, through what yes. Jesus did at Calvary. Yes. And Lord, we're, we're yes. believing that the great shepherd who laid his life down, you promised us in, in your word Word, that we shall not want, that you will supply our every single need. So we call upon you tonight, Lord, on behalf of the healing for the people, upon, upon, on behalf of the, the needs of the people, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, we're just believing you. We just want to Lord, thank you in advance, Lord, yes. for yes. Yes. all that we know that you're going to do, yes. what you have yes. done, what yes. you're yes. doing yes. right yes. now. Yes. And Lord, we know that you're going Lord, to do among the body and among the people, Lord. Lord. Yes. And Father, as always, Lord. we lift up of the other assemblies, Lord, Lord, across the country. Lord, those uh, uh, those assemblies that you've raised up, that you put a pastor in the pulpit who's determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and crucified, who's preaching the exclusive message of the cross tonight. We know that that is your man tonight, Lord. And we lift him up yes. and uh, we lift up his family. Lord, we know the enemy desires to, to, to have him and to, to destroy tonight, Lord, but we're not going to stand for it, Lord. We're going to intercede. Yes. We're going to lift these ministers, Lord, pastors, and preachers, and evangelists Lord, up tonight. Yes. Lord God, and we ask, Lord, for yes. you uh, just to, to watch up you keep yes. safe, healthy, and well. Lord, let the abundance of your grace flow. Lord, let there be an uh, let the faith that these men and women have be the faith that, that endures all the way to the very end, Lord. And uh, we pray, God, that you draw people into yes, these uh, yes, houses of worship. Lord, these assemblies that you raised up Lord, uh, Lord, on, on this solid rock. Lord. We pray, God, that you draw people to their uh, streaming, Lord, that uh, there, there would be an addition, that there would yes. be an increase, Lord. We know that you are a God of increase, that you that you're all about adding and increasing and 
and, and blessing, Lord. So we're believing for you to do that tonight, Lord, in these houses of worship that you have raised up and in the families and the pastor's life as well. We pray for these same things here today, Lord, yes. uh, in Brother yes. Jonathan's yes. life and family yes. and home, yes. Brother yes. James yes. as well, Lord. We pray yes. that you bless him yes. and his family. Yes. Lord, meet every single need. Watch yes. over yes. them on their job yes. as they labor. Uh, every day, Lord, sometimes in, uh, in, in difficult yes, places, Lord. Yes, and uh, we just pray that you just keep your hand upon them, watch over them, Lord, and, and protect them and keep them safe and sound out in the field as they labor. We thank you for their service unto the Lord, Lord. And we pray, God, that you would uh, uh, increase, Lord, that you would, uh, Lord, just help us to... Uh, uh, Lord, to just uh, have a great hunger and a thirsting you. for more of you, a greater and a deeper yes. understanding yes. of this great gospel. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And Lord, we just want to thank you tonight once again Hallelujah. for this great privilege and this opportunity uh, to serve you and to share your word. Lord, to oh. declare it tonight to the every ear that have desires you, to hear Jesus. And uh, Lord, we just pray, God, that the word as it goes forth tonight, it would indeed be deposited upon fertile ground of the heart that's made ready to receive, that it would yes. manifest, yes. Lord, and to uh, save souls, lives changed by your mighty Lord. power, bondage is broken, and that uh, there would be fruit bearing in the lives Hallelujah. of the people, Lord. Yes, Lord. And once again, we are humbled. Being conformed uh, to the image of Mighty humbled by yes. the, by the uh, thought that you would uh, allow us to be involved and have a part in what you're doing, Lord. And, and we pray, God, that you would uh, help us tonight, Lord, help our lips to speak. Nothing but the truth, nothing but that which would please you yes, and bring you honor yes. and do justice to your word yes. tonight. Lord God, let us do no damage, Amen. Lord, but let us declare it boldly, plainly, and clearly without hesitation, without fear or favor toward Amen. men tonight. Hallelujah. But Lord, Hallelujah. that there would be a blessing unto you yes. and all that would hear Hallelujah. and believe tonight, Lord. Oh, and we ask blessing. it all Hallelujah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And everybody said amen Thank you. and amen. Yes. Let's just lift yes. our hands Lord. and give him praise for just a moment. Thank you. Magnify Thank you. our great Thank you. God. He's worthy of Jesus. Jesus. Of all the amen. praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Thank the Lamb of God. Amen. amen. Lord. Well, we, um, last Wednesday night, we began looking at, at Second Kings, and what put us there was the message that Brother Jonathan preached uh, that Sunday before. We just could not, uh, I just could not get the, some of the things that this minister brought out. And it's, I've preached from this a number of times, things I've looked at and read, but it, just something about the way Brother Jonathan presented these things, it just really was a tremendous blessing. The light was shined upon, uh, if I'm saying that right, upon certain things, brought things to remembrance, and, it just, it, and every bit of it just revealed to us Calvary, it was oh, yes. revealing to us Christ, and Praise it me. was. Uh, it, we, we see the even the flesh in operation. We see the apostate church. We see the woman of great faith there in, in this passage of scripture, and then the same thing, Brother James. Uh, this past Sunday, just a page over, he preached a message on with the. Uh, as it pertains to the axe head that, that float uh, and right. swam, right. <laughs> that, that iron that swam. Yeah, and, uh, and just a tremendous, both of these messages, and I'm not trying to build these guys up, they, they know that, and uh, I sure hope, well, I am boasting a little bit, amen, but I want you to, if you hadn't listened to these messages, I want you to take time, go back, and, and find these messages on my page or their pages and listen, be blessed. Amen. But we're going to deal with this a little bit more. I know that uh, I'm the same way. Every message that I preach, there's always, you know, I look at the clock and then I'm holding people uh, afterwards and, and, and so on and so forth. And I know that you can, you know, my goodness gracious, <coughs> we don't need to be driven by the clock. Amen. But, uh, 
Amen. There's, you know, uh, like one preacher said, you know, we just, we don't want to hold the people hostage. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, you know, we just, you know, we run out of time. And then uh, there's things that we left on the table. We wish we uh, had time to say. And uh, there's things we wish we'd have made more yes. clear. I'm like this. I don't know if you men are. Yes. Uh, yes. After I preach a message, I'll drive it home. I think, wow, I wish I'd have made that more clear than I did. I wish I'd put more emphasis on this uh, part Amen. or on this, uh, you know, statement. I uh, wish I could explain it better. And, I, and there were scriptures that we always leave on the table that we really would have enjoyed to, to have gotten to be able to dealt with and and uh, we knew that the, the Lord had laid these things on our heart but we have to have the wisdom as ministers to, to put together the message and, and be able to present it uh, in, in a reasonable amount of time amen, amen. so uh, nonetheless what we're going to do tonight once again I'm just going to hand it back over to Brother Jonathan he's going to bring some things to our remembrance Brother James, feel free to jump in at every time. I'm not bowing out. I'm sitting here with my uh, in, in gear and ready to go. But uh, I want to give these men the opportunity to, to cover some things in these messages that they may not have been able to in, on Sunday morning. And Brother James, once again, feel free to jump in at any time. Amen. And uh, and then if, uh, if we have time, we'll go over to... Uh, your message that you preached this past Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, if you will listen tonight, amen, you, this, this broadcast will be a tremendous blessing to you. I know it will. If you're hungry and thirsty after righteousness and the truth, you can't help but be blessed tonight, amen. So praise God. Uh, just take your Bibles, go over to Second Kings, and uh, just wherever you want to pick up there, as it pertains to the, the Shittamite woman, a great woman of faith she was. Amen. amen. And uh, if you would just pick up wherever you Praise feel like you God. start there. Amen. Praise the Lord. i um, recap a little bit um, to refresh our memory on some of the things. I want to say once again that Shunem, the place of Shunem, means rest and quietness or quietly and and we and we no doubt would gather the reason that that's called that is because of this woman you can tie that together this woman was um, though she was a, a great woman of of wealth but she was a woman of faith and she had rest in the Lord and 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 she was concerned and cared about the things of God from the very beginning in this story. And um, and God gave her a promise through Elisha that she would bear a son. Amen. And that promise came to pass. She was barren, yes. could not have, have a child. And God promised her that you would, through Elisha, who is a type of Christ, a type of grace. Yes. And that she would receive a son. Amen. And we see that in uh, verse 16. I'll read that again. I'm just going to touch some high points. And I want to go I'm moving on over to 36 in a moment about the end result. We touched most of it last, last uh, Wednesday. Um, but we will hit the high points again as the Lord leads. But over in verse 16, it says... And he said, Elisha said to her, about the season according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, you, you man of God, do not lie unto your handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bore a son. Amen. At the season that Elisha had sent unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to, to a lad, carry me. And he said to a, he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Because the, the father there in this story, we see from the very beginning that he uh, was not really the man of faith as, as was the Shunammite woman was. But he knew 
He knew who somebody that did right. he, 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 he wasn't very spiritual. He, he, he knew used. somebody that knew what to do. Praise God. We see that same story in the next chapter. I'm not going to get ahead of myself about, you know, I know somebody that knows somebody that knows right. what to do for you. We see that in another story. Just gets better. We, we talked before the broadcast about how, but can, say, we, can we, for so just a moment, ahead. you know, that's what I like about listening to you guys, you know, just what, you know, it brings things, you know, into my thinking, you know, that, hey, let's stop and let's be, let's remind, you know, that we see how, how important her faith is, not just to her, but how it influences, it has influenced her husband, you know, uh, she, he knew that she was a woman of great faith, Amen. though he wasn't. Uh, he knew that she was, amen. So uh, it's, it's, we see that, and I say it often, you know, uh, how we live, our lifestyle is important. Our lifestyle is changed, can be changed, and is changed through the cross, the power of God, identifying with death so that the life of Christ can manifest in our mortal flesh. Praise These God. things can only be brought out for, by faith in what Amen. Christ did for us at Calvary. Amen. So, you know, and I, I know, you know, there are people that we don't, Sister Debbie and I, we might not hear from uh, months, maybe even years, but all of a sudden, let there be a disaster, or let there be a dilemma or something, or something devastating take place in the household and they always are reminded, well, let's call, uh, you know, Sister Debbie, Brother Wayne, and I know they do y'all the same way, amen. Let's, we know that they're people of faith. They know that they're praying right. people, you know. Amen. So, they, so that, that's a good thing. Hallelujah. Amen. And then our prayer is that, you know, one day, soon, hopefully, that they will actually enter into and desire not to depend on somebody else, but enter into this wall right, that it's we right, have. No more. Amen. Amen. And, and but, right. but, you know, nobody's going to want what we have if we're grumbling and complaining and, and murmuring all the time. All Amen. The time. You know, some Christians, you know, they, they act like that, uh, you know, the worst thing ever happened to them. They got saved. It's all oh, woe is me, you know, but right. it's the greatest thing that ever happened. The Amen. And, and our lifestyle should reflect that greatest thing that has ever happened to Amen. us. Amen. Not just for Amen. us, but so our children yes. uh, can be raised up in a way that they should go yes. so that hopefully that our life uh, can influence others. Amen. Paul said it there. And, uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 12, amen, this death works, it works. in me amen. and it brings about yes. life in you, amen. amen. Yes. So I'm, amen. The, I'm the guy that just kind of interrupts tonight, oh, amen. So I just pick back up and then just go on with what you were saying there. Uh, that's good, Pastor. What you said, everything is good. I appreciate it. But um, yeah, the, the father, when a boy, um, you know, he was. Apparently had a heat stroke or something of that effect in the field. He was working. He was with his father in the field while the father was working. So they told him to carry him to his mother immediately. And um, and and, and when he had taken him, he brought him to his mother and he sat on her knees till noon, then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Praise God that the bed that she had already prepared that her and her husband had already, her husband cooperated with her with the faith that God gave her to, you know, he, she told her husband, let's make a room for him. You right. know, for Elisha. Amen. For him. Amen. You know, the question is today, are you making room? Making room. Are you making room for Jesus Christ? Amen. Are you making a room in your heart? Amen. Amen. Are you welcoming him? Praise God in your house. Elisha being a type of Jesus. Amen. Uh, you know, we need to make room. You know, we, we we wonder why we have so many problems, but, you know, a lot of the problems, can, and we're all going to have problems even, even when you're saved and following Christ. You're not going to be without problems, but a lot of the problems that we're carrying around, the burdens and the, 
you know, the, the, the anxiety and all that, a lot of that's right. going to leave if you let Jesus come. Praise God. If you just right. let Jesus in your house. Praise God. Let him uh, let him be the Lord of your life, Lord of your house, the Lord of your family. Amen. Praise God. Just want to minister a little bit, but go ahead. And uh, it says, anyway, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. That's the type of us taking our burdens to the cross. Amen. You know, because you know, as we see as this story goes up, goes on, it's a beautiful type of the cross. And uh, it just plays out as the story goes on. As you, you know, it, it just gets better and better as you read this story here. It, uh, the bed of the man of God, she laid the boy on the bed. See, see, the husband knew what to do, even though he didn't have faith like she did, but he knew she had faith. And then when, then when the boy died, she knew what to do. She knew by faith she took the boy to the, to the bed of Elisha and, and laid him there and went out. She didn't just stay there and focus on the problem. She didn't just stay there with the boy, which most of us, most mothers, would have, they would just stay there with the boy until he died. Until he died and just been despair, in yes. despair. Yeah. But she didn't let her faith turn to despair That's right. and bitterness. She she was determined she was going to go find Elisha. She was going to get to Jesus. Amen. So to speak. So she was going to go to Jesus. Uh, I got some more scriptures in a moment if I get to them in Hebrews 6 about running to Jesus. We need to flee to Jesus. You know, uh, the, you know, the one who's already went before us. We have a hope as an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast. Hallelujah. Amen. He will never fail. Praise God. And um, if I get there, but it says, uh, and I want to touch on the high points about the fact she said it is well. Uh, she called her husband and said, send me, I pray you, out of the uh, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Where, wherefore will you go to him? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. And uh, then, then she sat on an ass and said to her servant, drive and go forth, slack not your riding for me, except I bid you. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. That's a type of Calvary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we see that in the story. Was it Elijah it, it, over, is it in First Kings, men, brothers? Mm -hmm. it, I think it's in, we know about Elijah right. went to Mount Carmel. Right. And notice this. Notice how the, the parallel right there about Elisha uh, going to Mount Carmel. Uh, right. He was dwelling at Mount Carmel, praise God, because he knew there was something good, significant about that. So oh, she yes. went and came came to the man of God to Mount Carmel, which is the cross, the type of Calvary, and came to pass when the man of God saw her far off that he said to Gehazi, his servant, behold, yonder is the Shunammite. And run now, I pray you to meet her and say unto her, it is well, ask her the question, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. Mm -hmm. Now, I, as I last Wednesday, I want to bring out a point again, as I said last Wednesday, about the way when you when you look at that real closely, the fact that she said it as well, and we will find out as the story goes on on behalf of her husband and her child because she maintained her, her faith. So therefore, it, it, the question was answered. It is definitely well right. because she held on to her faith, and it would be right. therefore it turned out to be well with her husband and her son. There you go. Because yes. she held faith. I got a verse I want to read. I wrote it down a few minutes ago. First Timothy one nineteen, holding faith and a yeah. good conscience, good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith. Have that made is. shipwreck. Yeah, you is. see, if we don't hold the maintain the faith that we have had from the beginning, we got to hold on <coughs> to the faith, Jesus Christ, and what He did for us at the cross. And thanks, thank God, she held on to her faith. Because if we don't hold on to it, the Bible makes it clear: some have put away. 
Right. The faith concerning the faith that made shipwreck. That means if you you can start off right, you can start off with faith and then put it away. You can put your faith away. You can right. put you can put your relationship down. You can put your the cross down. So many people put the cross down, but thank God she didn't. And because she didn't, it, it that's why she can say it as well. Because see, the point of the matter is, it was when she laid the boy on the bed. Something that came to my mind was it, it wasn't just a type of her taking her problems to the cross. She put herself there. You know, she already made up in her mind. She was already crucified with Christ. She put herself on she the cross. She was basically, even though she didn't literally, but spiritually, right. she was trusting in the Lord. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm putting, I, by faith, she took the boy to the, to the bed of the man of God. And so she, in essence, just like reminds me of, of Abraham, you know, with a lot, and Isaac going up to the hill. Abraham was walking by faith, taking Isaac to the to to the hill, as God told him, commanded him to take your son, your only son, the one you love, and offer him up as a sacrifice before me. So, in essence, it wasn't just Abraham taking the boy to the hill, and the boy being a type of Christ, uh -huh. the sacrifice. But in essence, Abraham was crucified with Christ. Right, in essence, right. by faith, Abraham was, you know, when he took Isaac up to the hill, Mount, was it Mount Moriah, I think it was. Right. And it, it was, a, it was a, this is a, it's a type right here of, you know, being crucified together with Christ. And Abraham and Isaac went together, praise God, to, uh, to Mount Moriah. So Abraham was basically saying goodbye you know he's basically saying i'm i'm going on with jesus i'm i'm walking by faith and he was crucified with christ amen, amen. see only a crucified man or woman can be able to say it as well that's right only that's a crucified child of god. god glory to god can amen. say all is well it is well amen, amen. um now i want to get on over um all right let's listen where it said uh, in verse 21, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. You know, the, the shutting the door upon him, it, it reminds me, you know, it was a settled matter of Christ going to the cross. Amen. His faith was in the cross. He knew there was his faith, his trust, confidence, Everything was in the Father that the Father would raise him up. Amen. When, when he went to the cross and, and, and died there, it was a settled matter. So we see that here with this woman as well. It's a settled matter in advance. She, she knows she just <clears throat> handed it, this child on, back over to the Lord. She knew that the promise that that the, the, the man of God gave her this child of promise and that she didn't give he didn't give her that child to, to just die that he would be Amen. raised up there's no doubt no I was doubt. Lost that as soon as she laid that child in that bed mm -hmm. she knew right then she did not waver one bit did not waver. she knew that God would raise that child Absolutely. from the dead Praise so she had faith. Amen. In the same respect, that and this is what I see here in several places. In the same respect that Christ, Amen, knew that He would be raised up by oh, the Father. Hallelujah. The same respect. He died, he praise God. God. In the same respect, we are to have the same faith that He had. Yes. That, that when we when we die, when we <laughs> commit ourselves by faith to the death of the cross. That's it. Amen. That's where we find life. That's where we Amen. find. It. That's where we will find. If we if we are if we die with him, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him Amen. and by him. Amen. So we see the two there intertwined. Faith that Christ had that took him to the cross. Our faith takes us to the cross. He was given life there. We shall be given life there as well. Amen. Amen. Life comes out of death. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Praise God. To go along with what y'all just said, it is a, uh, 2 Timothy 2.11.
It's one of my favorite like, go-to <laughs> scriptures. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, speaking of being dead with crucified with Christ, we shall also live with him. Yes. If we suffer, we shall also <coughs> reign with him. Praise God. That means fighting the good fight of faith. Suffering the sufferings and the reproaches, as Brother James has been, been mentioned a lot, you know, lately about the reproaches and I uh, heard uh, Brother Jonathan Medinsky and them talking about that, uh, you know, partaking, you know, the sufferings of Christ, you know, it's not not suffering to make us, it's not it's not suffering, so to speak, in other words, to make ourselves sanctified. It's not, you don't suffer to be sanct sanctified, it's just suffering, taking the cross, it's taking yeah, up the cross. We see the reproach of Christ. We see right. in a moment in verse 36 of 2 Kings uh about the, the, the benefits of the cross. I want to bring that out in just a moment. Okay, well, why are you there? And that suffering that yeah, you're talking about yeah. there, you know, I see you was talking about it. That suffering is what, you know, what are we suffering? The, what, are, what are we suffering if we're, in, if we're in Christ and we're living in this world and the world can't tell us no different from those yeah. that are in the world? We're not suffering anything. Right. right. We're not suffering anything. If we're fitting into this world, we're not made conformable unto the world. Right. We're made conformable unto his death. Right. His death. Right. And if we will take up the cross and forsake all those things that so easily draws us. And when I say us, there ain't anybody that's watching through that camera that ain't drawn to the lust of this world outside of Christ. Yeah. In Christ, you no longer have that lust uh, drawing. Well, it's there drawing you, but now you in Christ, you have the grace of God, which causes us to do what? To deny those things. Right. And to go in and continue to press forward in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. Now suffering that reproach, that's the reproach that we suffer, the same reproach that Christ suffered mm -hmm. when he lived in this world. He did not have a large gathering, and when they did follow him in great multitudes, he often would say things to them as like as he would over here in, uh, in Luke, Luke. Luke 14. Mm -hmm. Where he said, uh, if you, he said, if any man come after me. Now, now in Luke 14, and I'm still tying this to the shooter mic woman. Amen. Because right. she forsaked everything. Yes. When she laid that baby on that bed, right. she left him, her husband, and everything she had. Right. And she went to Calvary. Oh, right. praise God. <laughs> she went Hallelujah. to find the man of God. Right. Hallelujah. Right. To Calvary. So, and, I'm, and in the midst of all of this, let's not forget that this Shudamite woman was indeed, Scripture bear witness to it, that she was a wealthy woman, but she did not allow her wealth to interfere with her relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. and she still suffered mm -hmm. as a child of because God. Because she mm -hmm. wasn't worried about having that outward look of that's worldliness. That's right, absolutely, absolutely. She didn't, and that's what I'm, and I know that the <clears throat> Lord was definitely dealing with that, with so many in the body. Looking worldly. That's right. We're not here to look worldly. Right. And that's appeasing to the flesh. But over in Luke 14, verse 25, it says, And there went great multitudes with him. Now, no doubt Jesus did have great multitudes that followed him. But listen to what happens when Jesus starts speaking. And he turned to the multitudes and he said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, ye and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's right. There went the multitude right then. There went. Right. There went the multitude. That's right. 
Multitude didn't hang around. Right. That's right. Right. Just, just like in John 6, um, you mentioned it. I may jump in if you don't mind. Yo, go ahead. Yes, in John right. 6, you mentioned it Sunday about this is a hard saying. You know, I see the contrast in, right. in 2 Timothy. This is a faithful saying. It's a faithful saying. For those that are dead in Christ, just like the Shunammite woman can say it is well. Only those, it's only faithful saying and it's well to those who are taking up the cross, who, who those who are crucified with Christ. They're the ones that can say it as well. And they're the ones that, that agrees that it is a faithful saying. But it's a hard saying to those who cannot bear the reproach of Christ. There you go. In 27 right there in, in Luke 14, he says, And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And we know that a disciple is one who learns uh, right. being taught learner, God's yeah. word. Follower of Christ. Learning right. God's word. And I see a lot of Christians out there today, man, how come I can't understand the word of God? Well, what are you doing with the cross? Right. Are you denying everything else? Denying yourself? Love not the, uh, the, those things and taking up the cross? Right. Are you doing that? That's the key. Are you willing to suffer that reproach? Are you willing to call, count all those things that you have been taught by all those Pharisees, by all those big scholars, by all those that are worldly? Mm -hmm. This got the nice, this got this worldly. I just say it like that, mm -hmm. and I'll leave it at that. Right. Worldly. Right. Worldliness is not what Christ died to make us. Right. Christ died that we might suffer his reproach that he might be made manifest in our life. Yes. No longer I, but Christ now yes. lives in That's me. Right. And if Christ is living in me, I will be suffering the reproach that Christ suffered. He said in Scripture, you could probably go there. You probably know it right off the top of your head, Brother Jonathan. He said that the servant is not above his master. Now, that's Scripture. Right. So, how is it that many today think that they can take up the cross and not suffer the reproach of Christ right. and not be made into the image of Christ and all the worldliness be tossed aside. Right. You can't take up the cross and bring up a ball and chain uh, the, the Cardassians with you, whatever yeah. their names yeah. are. Yeah. You can't bring all this with you. You can't bring that lifestyle living with you and the cross. You have to come to the cross by yourself right. and deny yourself right. and deny all those things that are so easily wanting to beset us and to keep us from becoming disciples of Christ. Right. And that's what this Shulamite woman done. She, she, she believed and she told Elijah. <laughs> Where, where's it at over there? She told Elijah, uh, she said, as the Lord lives. Mm -hmm. 30. Yes. She told, she said, uh, as the Lord lives. And as our soul lives, your soul, your soul lives, I will not leave you. Come on. I will not leave you. I'm going to tell you, it's going to take you to go to Calvary and, and, and not leave it. That's determination. Right. And yeah, not absolutely. leave it, no matter what's going on. Even if your child falls dead, not leave it. Do you believe? I'm sitting here telling you. I don't know what, I do know this. If I had a child and it fell dead, I am going to trust God to do whatever Absolutely. needs to happen. Absolutely, praise God, amen. No matter what, I can remember when we had Chloe and she, and and and, 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 and we almost lost her. And, and when I, but the Lord knew. When I say we almost lost her, well, God already knew. Already. He knew. I didn't fret over it. 
Ashley had some things going on with her when she had the baby, but I tell you what, man, when I just walked into the room and just it just began to just seek the Lord. I, yes. I was seeking the Lord the Amen. whole time I was in the hospital. Amen. But God can do exactly what uh, God has promised. Right. Right. If we'll come by faith, and that faith has to be exclusively in what what the Bible says faith needs to be in. And that is the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And this Shunammite woman is very much representative of what you uh, just explained. Uh, Gehazi, she had uh, she she approached this woman upon uh, the uh, meeting and uh, asked, you know, can we speak to the king for you and. And can we do thus and so? Right, right. right. Yes. I'm looking at Thir uh, 13, 12, 12 and 13. Uh, and uh, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, called the Shittimite. When he had called her, he stood before him and he said unto him, uh, Say now to her, Behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What What is it? that should be done for you. Would you be spoken of for the king or the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. She wasn't. See, she wasn't. And, and, and everything about the Shunammite woman, yes. amen. And the thing of it is, I relate, you know, this is how God desires his church to look. Amen. You know, she's representative of faith, yes, woman of faith, but she's representative of the church. This is how God desires to, the church to look on. And she didn't care about her appearance. She didn't care there about standing for oh, royalty. Right. You see, she That's didn't it. care about recognition. That's it. And, and this, you know, Jesus, the Bible says Jesus made no repetition, uh, reputation. Right. Reputation for himself. She didn't care about any of that. You know, she was a woman of faith. Right. And she said, I just, and I know we spent a good bit of time on that last uh, Wednesday night. That's good. That's good. But right. she just answered and said, I dwell among my own people. My own people. So she was firm, just like you said, brother. She was firmly reserved, resolved, dedicated right. <laughs> to her faith and nothing else interest her. You she know, was content. She, yes, she was content, satisfied. Amen. She said, I just dwell above my own people. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm not looking for but and she was a wealthy woman, you know, but once again she didn't care about the royalty. She didn't right. care anything about going up at King's Court. And I can guarantee you that she didn't wear a big chain around her neck either. <laughs> bling, <laughs> bling, bling, bling. Right. She but wasn't you, boasting in them guy in that gold. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's right, absolutely. And, and the Lord had blessed her whatever means, but however all of that took a back seat to her. Yes. You know. That's right. Behind her relationship that's because with the Lord. she had Christ in the front that's seat. Right. That's right. Hallelujah. Now she trusted him. Yes. She, and her faith was so great. When her son died, she trusted the Lord. This yes. is you gave me Hallelujah. this son. So went straight and I, I know you're not going to take it, but you're going to raise this child. Determination. Yes. That's and right. And she laid her. She yeah. laid that son on the, the man of God's bed. Yes. Yeah. And, and all oh. that's identifying oh. with our oh. death oh. And, and our union yes. is our death. death. And then Christ being raised up with him into newness of life. Oh. Hallelujah. But I want to repeat something that I said Tuesday morning. That would have been yesterday. Amen. And, and, and I'm quoting someone else. But I said it, I want to say it again. You brought it out. You, you jog my memory on that. I need that nowadays, amen, to help me remember. But appearance rules in the church today. Oh, boy. Appearance is what, how, you know, <laughs> think about that. People gravitate. It's like a magnet. Mm -hmm. People are drawn to charisma. They're, they're drawn to that which looks so success, successful. Successful. Right. right. It's got to look successful. successful. So appearance. Oh, that's good. Brother. Appearance that's right. now rules. That's and those who appear 
to be successful, it's an appearance. Amen. It's, an appearance. it's just an appearance. They appear to be successful. You know, they have the the big church, the the big steeple, stained glass windows. You know, the big, the, you know, a hundred people in the choir. You know, mm -hmm. uh, twenty five musicians, uh, uh, thirty two ministers. You know, and, and it appears to be successful. And in the eyes of men, it is successful, but in the eyes of God, it means nothing if they've got the cross on the shelf. You Come see. On. The Bible yeah. says, Pastor, the Bible says that what men highly esteem, God sees as an abomination. That's right. Absolutely. That's the scripture. So, you know, the, the majority of the church is looking at appearance to declare whether or not it's successful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're not called to be successful. No. Now, I know that kind of blows people away when you say that. We're called to be, we're, we're called to be faithful. Called to be we're faithful. called to be. And by Jesus. everything that we see, this woman could have presented herself as being very successful in life. Yes, you mm -hmm. know, look what I did for the man of right. God. We built a room on the house. We gave him a, yeah. a throne to sit on, you know. We gave him a bed. Look look at what I have done. She gravitated toward right. none of that, right. you know. None of that. Uh, no self-recognition, no making a reputation for herself. She just said, I just... You know, I'm happy just dwelling among my own people. And I got God. You know, what, God. What, what does everything what does anything else uh, Thank you, Lord. you know sit Jesus next to that? Lord. Nothing else matters. Oh, yeah. So uh today those who appear to be successful are elevated to anointed and blessed of God's status. Mm. You mm. see. Wow. Look how successful they are, they're very Sick. anointed. They've been blessed of God when really, once again, uh, God didn't, he, he, he may have had something to do with it at some point in time, in time past. But let me tell you something, what matters is where you're standing today. That's what matters. What matters is where you are today. Amen. And where you're going to be tomorrow. Are you, are you, are you uh, continuing in the faith? Are yes. you... Are you are, are you finishing the course? Are you fighting a good fight of faith? Are you determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified? God could have used any number of people greatly in times past, maybe even souls saved and great exploits for the kingdom of God. But none of that matters if you all of a sudden put the cross on the shelf and you leave the faith that right. God honors, what you've done in the past doesn't hold any water. It carries no weight. It has, uh, it, it means nothing. God is looking for that individual who has anchored their faith in the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Amen. That's what God's looking for. But man in the church has fell into this trap. They 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 look at the how big the church is and and they deem whether or not it's, it's of God based upon that. And so uh, because of that, because they have risen to become leaders of large churches. So because of that, now that, well, what did that leader say? You know, well, I don't really care what he said. It doesn't matter how many followers he has, how much money to raise, how many people says yes and amen. I, that, you know, I don't care what that leader says. What does, thus says the Lord thy God. What is the word of God saying? Yes. And, and where is your faith? What is what is your message all about? Her life, and, and not only the things that she said, all is well, you know, but her life yeah. represented where her heart was. Oh, yes. Yes. It was right. more than just lip service. Right. Amen. Though out of the abundance of your heart, the, the mouth speaks. Amen. But out of the abundance of your heart, 
Your legs will move. Too. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 If, 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 if your move. heart is right, your legs are going to move right. Amen. 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 And so her life demonstrated what was in her heart as well. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, that's where we're at today, you know, and the truth, the truth has taken a back seat to what? To charisma, mm -hmm. to stage acts. Yes. And to what makes us feel good about ourselves, oh, you yes. say. And and money, you say. Oh yes. And and we're gonna to get to it in a minute. You know, where Gehazi, you know, he he desired the money that Elijah turned down from Naaman. That's Amen. right. When he Amen. came on the scene. Let's right. get back to where you was at. Amen. Uh can I can I read a verse that came to my mind in yes, Matthew nine? Because I had this in my notes to go along with what you just said about her actions, not just saying she believed in the Lord. There's a lot of people that say they believe in the message of the cross, Amen. but, but they, they're not, but they're, there's no fruit, there no fruit go. of righteousness. But anyway, in Matthew nine, this is in my notes because when I was originally studying this sometime back, like a few months ago, I, I looked at this and I remember anyway, this, look at Matthew nine, uh, 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. Now think about that for a moment. They came to him. Think about that. They were blind, mm -hmm. physically blind. But they found him. But they came <laughs> to him when, when he was in the, they said so this is a type of, a, of walking in faith. There it is. Because it. they was physically blind when, when he came into the house, when Jesus came to the house, the blind men came to him. That's right. Think about it. This is something to stop and chew on for a moment now. They were blind, but they right, right. came. And Jesus said unto them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And see, he already knew, glory to God. He already knew, he already knew what they needed. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he already knew before they even said a word. Jesus said, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, yes, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open. Hallelujah. And, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, Say, See that, that no man know it. But anyway, the point I want to bring out in that was the fact of, of faith in action, faith that has legs on it. You know, they couldn't see physically blind, but yet they came, they, they followed Jesus in. Jesus come into the house. They follow Jesus in the house. Amen. That, that right. is, that's something right there. But, you know, uh, right along with that, when you look at Gehazi, which is a type of flesh, a type of the, the, the apostate church, the carnal, the fleshy, fleshly church, amen, in, in 2 Kings uh, chapter 4 and, and verse 31, you know, when when the staff of Elijah was given to Gehazi, amen, it says there in the child is not awakened. And you you, you said, well, it's because uh, he, he did, his faith was not applied. Faith, he didn't, uh, uh, how right. do you say, uh, faith wasn't appropriated. He didn't him. believe that it would happen. He didn't, right. he didn't he believe. Right. And, 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 and stop and, and think about that You're for just a moment. taking orders. That's, that's right. You know, you got a lot of people out here that are claiming the cross, but they're not, the faith is not there. It's just, uh, it's just a, a proclamation. It, it's a, they claim the cross, but their faith is not really, it's not right. mixed with faith. Right. And and, and 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 you know, Brother Jonathan, Sister Amy, I read a post or heard something they said earlier, you know, and, and the, the, what we're seeing going on, well, the pulpits are identifying with the cross because, and they're just identifying with mm -hmm. it. But, but now, let me stop right there. What you see right here in verse 31 with the Gehazi, the child did not awaken. Mm -hmm. Even though he had the staff in his hand right. from, of Elijah, which represents the word of God in right. the context of the cross, mm -hmm. but nothing happened with him mm -hmm. because faith it was it mixed with faith. Was it mixed with right. faith? That is a picture 
of what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. They have a form of God, godliness, but they they have denied the power thereof from such from such turn away. We're not to make buddies of power of them. But I, but I read where they had wrote. Amen. That the church is uh, uh, they're they're identifying with the cross because they want to get into the it is it is it's 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 a uh, it's a strategy. It's it's a right. It's an it's a it's a money strategy. So if you identify with the cross to get into their pockets, then you also identify with the the word faith people to get into their pockets you identify with the new apostolic reformation people to get into their pockets and and i think all of that just runs together uh you know they're one and the same all of these buzzards get roosting on the same rotten limb but you know they identify with the apostates to get into their pockets so that right now that they're, they're just simply after the money that both camps has to offer. So they're not really sold out to the message of the cross because they want to, they want to take advantage of the popularity that they can find with the, the, the apostate church and the money that they have to offer. There's big, ladies and gentlemen, there's big money to be made in religion. Oh, it's big money to be made in religion. Oh, you yes. see Gehazi going after that money. You know, Elijah, he refused the offering that Naaman, and I know that's a different program, still, uh, chapter. chapter but it's but right there. It's right oh, there, yeah. next page yeah, over. Where we're headed. But, <laughs> but Elijah refused the offering of Naaman uh, because it would uh, disqualify the, his healing by by grace, right. amen. amen. We, we, the things of God cannot be purchased. Cannot be purchased. And God forbid that we would use the things of God to 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 build wealth, amen. Uh, God forbid, and that's where we are today. There's a money hungry church out there active today, amen. And they present themselves to be successful so you will can uh, feel good about identifying with them and so you will feel good about pouring your money in into that ministry Amen. you say and, and it's all a strategy of the enemy no one is going to grow in that. There's, there's, there's no spiritual growth apart. You said it earlier. Apart from the cross, Amen. You're just in dead religion, just like Gehazi represents. He's money hungry. Give me the money that you. Basically, what he's saying. Give me, give me the wealth yeah, that you had offered. Elijah and he turned it down because it would identify with works above, uh, above the grace of God you see yes. and the thing of it is uh, I, I just got a feeling Elijah never spent a day without uh, something to eat I just got a feeling you see what oh, the, no the Shunammite yeah. woman did you know, she took care of it. That's right. Took it. You know, this man of God, he wasn't worried about where the no. finances and money no. came from. Amen. And he just, you know, he Walk was a man face. of God. Right. Amen. Amen. And, God. And, but now Gehazi, he was a different story. He's a man of flesh. He represents the apostate church. He was money hungry. Amen. So he was after the give me what the lies you don't want. And uh, so that's that's where we are, today. and that's what's so uh, timely about these messages that you men preached, and what this is saying. It's applicable to where we are today, if you want to see it. the The sad thing is, the majority of the people, Amen, will turn a deaf ear to what we're saying. That's uh, and the reality is they'll say, well, there's that James Wilkett, there's that John and Melton, there's that Wayne Voss. We know uh, what they're going to say. It's just going to be nothing but warning after warning after warning. Let me tell you something. The reason it is like that is by design. Amen. God is speaking in these, in these 
five lives of the yes, church age. He's right. to the people. And it's done out of love for the body. Yes. Amen. It's, it's, it's God reaching for, for, for the church to come yes. back to the first love and, and for them to come back to Calvary. Yes. Amen. There's times that we that I know that I seek the Lord. Lord, are you sure that you would have me just to continue on in what we're doing here? And, and he would always probably, you, you know, just just keep doing what I'm leading you to do. We know that we're not gaining popularity, but we're not after popularity. No. We're after pleasing the Lord. We know that in the eyes of most of, of the church world, we're not looked upon as being successful. We're not trying to be successful as it pertains to the uh, how men see success. Amen. We're not called to be successful. We're called to be faithful and be faithful unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. And the only way we can do that, amen, is to preach the gospel of God. To That's preach the, the gospel that he <clears throat> has given us. That's what he has equipped us and called us to be. To be preachers of this foolishness. Amen. That to be preachers of what the majority of the church world sees as foolishness. So here we are, amen, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and, and verse 3. We're smack dab right in the middle of it. The 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3, for the time will come, it's, it's here. Ladies and gentlemen, they will not endure. Uh, you spoke about that reproach. They cannot, they're unwilling to endure the reproach. They're unwilling to endure those things, endure sound doctrine. Uh, enduring sound doctrine is going to bring reproach upon you. Oh, yes. The enduring, our enduring sound doctrine, instead of throwing in the tile and, and, and going the way of Gehazi, going the way of the apostate church, that's, that's a flesh-pleasing route. There's no offense there. No, you no. see, there's no persecution there. There's no opposition there. But that man that's got the that's lifting Christ and him crucified, there's going to be tremendous opposition and persecution. There's going to be great reproach. Amen. But by the grace of God, we can and will endure to the end. Amen. Just as the yes. Apostle Paul did. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they gather to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears mm -hmm. from the truth. Will they do it Will willfully. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, which is Christ, and shall be turned to fables. And fables are the words of men right. and not the word the words of God. Amen. Back off go ahead. I'll say something. Go ahead. Go on. She said you were saying a few minutes ago about you asked the Lord, Lord, you know, should I keep going on? Right. What I'm what I'm doing, warning oh, and yeah. all this. Well, we got scripture to back that up. Well, you did, you've already backed it up, but I'm just saying I thought about oh, this. The Holy Spirit is warning. First Timothy four one. Now the Spirit speaks expressively. That's right. And that means pointedly to the point, and you know, exclusive. It reminds me of the exclusive message. You know, without compromise. You know, now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. I can you know, go on and on that. I just wanted to read that about that put emphasis on verse one that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is he's warning. Yeah, second second Timothy uh, four two also says, preach the word. Right. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort. With all long suffering right. and doctrine. doctrine right. right. So the Bible tells us right. exactly what God desires. Absolutely right. Uh, that that His minister do, and that's to preach the word in all aspects as the full counsel of God, Christ and Him crucified. Right. You can't preach Christ crucified without preaching more. Right. 
Paul said, we preach, we warn, we teach. Yeah, That's part teach. of the, the gospel presentation. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if the Holy Spirit is speaking expressly, pointedly, mm -hmm. plainly, mm -hmm. amen, then, uh, you know, I've had people say, well, you know, I've dealt with a particular person, amen, and then, well, you know, I, I speak from the Lord. I speak according to the Holy Spirit. Well, if you are, then why do you have a problem with the warnings? Amen. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit speaks plainly, pointedly, and expressly. Amen. As it pertains to yes. these things. Amen. So, uh, now just... Hold on to your train of thought right there. Amen. Yes. Matthew chapter 10. And uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 21. Yes. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 21. And, th and this this is the teachings of Christ. And this is uh, this is where we're at today. Amen. Oh, yes. The blood bought church. This is it. Amen. Amen. And it says, And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. Amen. And the father and the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And the note says an animosity against Christ and the cross is greater than uh, than love for loved ones. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, uh, it, it was it was Cain, it was Abel's brother that killed him because of the gospel. That's message. it. That's right. it. It was yes. it was Abel's brother that that killed him because Abel embraced the lamb and the lamb Amen. is the slain lamb and the slain lamb, lamb is the cross Christ in him crucified okay now look what it says in verse 22 and it says and you shall now that word shall means you will amen and it says and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake now that's Speaking of the offense of the cross, oh, yes. the, repro the reproach That's of the it. truth, That's amen, it. Christ and him crucified, mm -hmm. identifying with that, being determined to know nothing else, amen, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. But he endures, there's that enduring mm -hmm. faith, amen, the, the grace that causes us to endure the yes. reproach, the hate, the opposition, it is there, amen, but we there. will endure, amen. And what was it Paul said? When I was reviled, I reviled not, not again, not again. Right. amen. That's right. Right. It's going to come, amen, but we, <laughs> you know, we just keep preaching, you see, we keep marching. Hallelujah. And, and he says, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he who endures the end shall be saved amen you ultimately we're going to be saved through all of this and this is a right now application it's not you can apply this right now it's not just the tribulation application it's right now now so move right over to verse 34 i'll go on with that Jesus, same page, Matthew 10, right. verse 34. Jesus said, this is dealing with opposition, yes. amen, to the true Christian, amen. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth, amen. What does that do to all these people? Say, well, we need to be building bridges, you know. We need <clears throat> we need to get our arms around the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the apostate church and make buddies and power with it. We need to build bridges. That was the, mm -hmm. the content of a message that I heard from yeah. the platform in Baton Rouge not too long ago. Right. We need to be building bridges. No, we're not to be building bridges. We preach the cross, preach the cross. and people right. get saved and they're delivered, amen, from whatever they're in. That is your uh, that is your way out. That's it. That's your way out. We're not, make, we're not building bridges to where we can get over to where we right. are and make but is as house. The Bible tells us to avoid you. The Bible tells the Bible tells us to turn from everything that you stand for. Amen. Amen. Now, yes, we love you. 
and we want you to be saved and, and delivered, but you are to come our way. God's raised, given us the gospel to influence you. We're not to be influenced by what you're doing and what you're preaching. You. So Jesus said, think not that I've come to send peace on earth. I came, I came not to send peace, but a sword. That's what Jesus said. That's right. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Praise God. He said, "For I have come." Amen. He come to, to he come to, to to bring not peace, but what is what is the uh, the the key words in the modern day church? It's love, it's unity, and it's peace, and hope. it's great and hope. As they hope, yes, about. and you know all of that. You know, let's just all get together, unite. God is nothing but love. We preach a message of grace, you see. But Jesus said, I'm coming with a sword, amen. I'm, I'm going to cut some things down. Amen. I'm going to cut some things out of your heart and your life. Am I right on this? Right. He and he said, said in verse 35, that's what he said. <laughs> that's what he said, amen. <laughs> that's right. That's what he said, right. amen. But for I have come to set a man at variance, at odds, mm -hmm. against his father and the daughter, against her mother and the daughter-in-law, against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Mm. Now look what it says. Now here we are. See when we when we quote these scriptures about taking up the cross, we forget about what's written before we get there. That's right. Amen. So here now here's the answer to all of that. The answer to that dilemma is the cross. Amen. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Not worthy. Now, pay close attention. It. it doesn't say uh, it's not rebuking love for your mother and father. It's dealing with love who loves their father and mother more than me. Right. Amen. More than me, he said, is not worthy of me. Christ must come first in all things. Amen. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Amen. Means not to not worthy to receive what I did for him at the cross. Hey, you are my son and my <laughs> Uh, my daughters, I love them, amen, but they didn't lay their life down for me that I might be saved amen. from my sin. And that's what's being brought to the forefront here, amen. And it says, and here we are, verse 38, and he who takes not his cross, his cross is the cross of Christ. That's it. My cross is his cross. That's it. We don't but there's have no him. misunderstanding yes. about what's being said here. Yes. I am crucified with Christ, yes. Galatians 2 20. I don't have a cross apart from the cross of Christ. Amen. Okay? Yes. His Amen. cross is my Amen. cross. Hallelujah. We both identify with the same cross. Yes, right. we do. We Amen. identify with the same cross. Cross. Hallelujah. That means we identify with the same faith. Yes, that's Amen. Right. That's we identify yes. with the same cross. We identify with the same faith. That means we identify with the same grace because he gave himself by the grace of God. That's Amen. It. That's and, it. The, and the grace that was afforded him is given unto us. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. That's well. Same faith, Thank same cross, yes. same grace. Okay. Amen. It's the same. It's all the same. It's the same. Right. Amen. Amen. And and he who takes not his cross and, and follows after me, the only way we can follow him is to take up the cross to be crucified with him. If we're not crucified with him, our following him is is it's cut short. It's, 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 it's not it's, there. It's yeah. cut off. We're it's not there. It's, it's not there. It doesn't exist. It does we not cannot exist. follow. We cannot. We cannot spend the day right. in relationship, oh, not I even hallelujah. a moment hey, in God. relationship hmm. with the Father, apart from what Jesus did at Calvary. Right. We cannot identify ourselves as being followers, disciples, or or 
of martyrs of Christ apart from the cross. And there were made disciples. And there right. were made followers. And there agree. were made martyrs. You see, the, the cross is what brings us into anything and everything that God desires. Apart from the cross, we're not in God's will. At any time, Amen. At any time, we cannot be in the will, the purpose, or the plan of God for us apart from the cross and our death and crucifixion with Him. That's the that's the gospel. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. Yes. For the preaching mm -hmm. of the cross is to them the Gehazi's, amen, to them the fleshly, the, the apostate, amen, it's a foolish thing, amen, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, and, and those that see this cross as, as foolishness, the Bible says you're perishing, perishing. you're going the opposite direction, right. amen, but to us which are, which are saved, the cross is the power of God for us right. to be saved and to live a life saved, amen, set apart, victorious, amen, delivered and set free. It's all wrapped up in the cross. Amen. And he who takes not his cross and follows after me, look what it says, is not worthy of me. Amen. Verse 39. Now I hand it back over to Brother Brother Jonathan, amen. You still got something ready. And it says, verse 39, he who finds his life shall lose it. The, the guy out here that's refusing to cross, he's looking another avenue to, for his life to be spared and saved. That's it. He, he's, he's manufacturing another avenue to get to heaven, but it's of his own doings. Right. It's that fallacy. Right. It's that it's that it's that fiction. Right. It's it's imaginations right. Right. that he has conjured up right. with the help of seducing spirits yeah, and is. the doctrines of devils. So he just manufactured this fallacy and he believes right. that God's gonna just swing heaven's gates wide open, amen, for him when it's all make believe and pretend. Amen. He said he who finds his life shall lose it. But he who loses his life, that's us identifying with our death yes. on the cross. We yes. died right there. Amen. But the moment that we died, amen, we were we received life. Yes. Life came immediately out of that death at the cross. The moment that we identified with faith, by faith in what Jesus did at Calvary, we were crucified with him, co-crucifixion, co-buried, co-raised. I mean, it happened the moment that we believe, but we need to understand. Yes. We need to know what happened at that moment. He who finds his life shall lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The note says that means places his life into Christ, which is done mm -hmm. by the cross. Romans yes. chapter 6, verse 3 through 5. Um, Brother John, God. you got it? That, uh, just keep going with what you got. That reminds Amen. me of that Shunammite woman once again. Absolutely. She, when she, played, all right there. She, she lost. See, it wasn't the fact that woe was me. My son is dead. No, she was willing to, let, she was willing to lose her life for Christ's sake, by taking the boy to the bed, right. she laid her life down in faith, by faith, believing that not only was the boy going to be raised again, but she was actually, as we see in verse 36 of Second uh, Kings 4, uh, we see the benefits of the cross. We see, look at this in verse 36, and he oh, called yeah. Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite. This was after uh, Elisha had done laid on the boy uh, laid on him and, yeah. and and the type of us being crucified with Christ. He yeah. laid mouth to mouth, hands to hands, yeah. face to face, uh, oneness, with oneness with Christ. And the boy was raised. Yeah. And then in verse 36, he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite. So he called her and when she was coming to unto him, he said, take up your son. There you go. That's why I was going to take up yeah. your son. Hallelujah. And, uh, and then 
Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground. It's the type of us worshiping Christ in spirit and in truth. But she wasn't really worshiping. She wasn't worshiping Elisha. She was just grateful, thankful, you know, to the Lord for what God did through Elisha. Yeah, and yeah. she bowed herself to the ground, took up her son and went on, and went, went out. Took and up the cross and went so on. I'm thinking about going on in the benefits of the cross. Yes. You know, take up. You know, being raised in the okay. of life. Romans 6, 5, we've been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So she, she took, she's taking up the cross and, you know, walking in faith, walking, walking, in, walking in what God has already done. Taking up the cross. This whole story starts off with the cross and ends with the cross. Yes, it's all about yes. the cross. It's the all, whole, all through it. All through it. We, and that's yeah. how we have to be. We have to start with the cross. We never leave the cross. Yes. And and, she, and he said, take up your son. So we just take up the, the benefits, take up the the results of the cross. Absolutely. Praise God. You know, that look, that look. Go ahead. I was saying, you know, you was talking about taking it up, you know, uh, the message that the Lord laid on my heart Sunday, you know, at the end of that, of closing out, you know, Elijah said, uh, he said, therefore, he, he said, he said, take it up. He said, take it up to you. He said, take it up to you. He said that to yeah, the to yeah. the, the young prophets, mm -hmm. you know, after he yeah, after, yeah. after he took his own limb, his stick, his own right, stick, yeah. yeah. He said, "Take it up to, to you. you. Take it up to That's you." Good. They That's right. Praise so, God. You know, That's right. This right. is Old Testament. Absolutely, Old Testament. It's pointing us to the cross. Every way to Calvary. Come on, the whole thing. Now, now, take <clears> it. Just, just take it all. Let's close it out. Amen. In verse Second Kings, chapter four. And uh, verse 27. Look what it says there. And when she came, y'all got it? Mm -hmm. got it? And when she came to the man of God, remember Elijah's a type of Christ. To the hill. Amen. Amen. To the hill, Calvary. Ooh, Amen. Look what it says. She, the, the Shunammite woman, <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Like she, she caught him by the feet. Oh, yes. All right, now. She's got a lock on. Oh, she's locked she, in. She's locked in. Yeah, and, and she's humble. Absolutely, <laughs> man. And, and and but but Gehazi, now he's the fleshly man. He's the apostate church. He's the money hungry guy. Amen. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. Mm -hmm. Now he Gehazi is representing false doc. He's representing everything mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. hindrance. Mm -hmm. yes. He's representing Religion. everything that Jesus died on the cross to deliver us and set us free from. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. Well, see, that's all that religion can do. It that's just it. It, put, it moves you away yes. from the provision and the blessings of the cross. Amen. Religion moves you away. And, 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 and the man of God, but the, Elijah said, the man of God said, let her alone. Let her alone. Now, just every time I read that, I can read it over and over and over, and it just it takes me to scriptures in the New Testament. But what in particular, you know, and, and when she came unto the man of God, to the hill, Calvary, she caught him by the feet. She's, man, she's got her, she's got Christ in his in her grip, say, yes. man, by faith. What he did at Calvary, she caught him by the feet, and but Gehazi came near to thrust her away, religion, mm -hmm. a false doctrine, and the man of God said, let her alone. Come on. Amen. So that reminds me. Uh, particularly of what Paul said in Colossians chapter one, verse twenty-three. If you, she's continuing in the faith. She's continuing. Right? She, but she, but see, see, her faith caused her to see right through Gehazi. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. He, he didn't influence her the least little bit. She saw Come on. right through Gehazi. She saw what he was. Amen. Amen. And she was clinging to the man of. God. Yes. Amen. She she knew the man of God. Amen. She also knew who Gehazi was. Oh, yes. And he was that man that had a form of religion, but was really denying the power of because right. his faith, it, what, what he had wasn't 
mixed with faith. Amen. Amen. So Paul said in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 25, continue in the faith. And that's not going to happen without determination. Yes. That's, that is not going to happen without you being determined not to know anything save Jesus Christ and him crucified just like this woman is clinging to the feet Hallelujah. of the man of God. This continuing in faith is not going to happen if we don't fight that good fight of faith. Be grounded in self and be not moved away. She wasn't going to get mixed up with Gehazi. She wasn't going to allow herself to be moved away from the faith, amen. She knew who to identify with. Yes. She knew who to cling to. She knew who to avoid, amen. Yes. And Paul has told us a number of times to turn away and avoid those that the church today is now clinging to and making buddies and pals with. Right the opposite of what the Word of God is telling us and reminding us to do. And it's for our own benefit. It's for our own good. Hallelujah. And Paul said, continue the faith, granted to seven, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul am made a minister. Oh, Amen. Amen. He preached the cross. That's Amen. our answer. It's all in the cross. Praise God. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, I sure hope you and oh, pray that you receive God. something uh, tonight from this lesson. Amen. We could go through this over and over and continue to bring forth uh, these nuggets of truth and, and be blessed by it. Amen. And we sure pray that you have yes. tonight as well. Amen. Let me encourage you to be back with us uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We'll be gathering here in the Sanctuary Crossway Ministries on Highway 82 in Greenwood, Mississippi. We're just five miles uh, west of Walmart. Not hard to find. But if you're not able to be with us, log on and join us by internet. You can join us by uh, Facebook, my Facebook <coughs> page, Wayne Voss, or you can go over uh, to our church website, crosswayministers.org, and you can view our service by YouTube right there from our uh, church website. But no matter how you join us, just be sure you join us. Amen. God bless you. Love you, each and every one. Hope to see you then. Amen. Amen.